Hello, the name of the veteran we are interviewing is Ali Boynton. He was born September 18, 1932. He did not serve in any combat, but he was in the U.S. Army. His highest rank was a corporal, and today's date is May 16, 2021. This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Liberty of Congress. So, when were you first born? September 18, 1932. And what was your, what was your childhood like? Very, it was a nice childhood, mm -hmm. but it was in the, in the depths of the depression. We did not have a lot of stuff that the kids have today. The telephone was ringing, was probably lucky if it rang once a day. Sometimes it didn't ring for four or five days. And we never had any, no such thing as television. Um, everything we got was on the radio. And we had to really string a big wire antenna out to get the get the information on the radio. And that's how we got our news, that's how we got our entertainment programs. Well, yeah, I bet living in like a small town like St. Ignis didn't help either, kind of away from everything. Well, yes, it was away from the big radio stations yeah. like Detroit and Lansing, which are all close and everything. We had to put up great big antennas on the roof and wire them into the roof and everything to get to reach some of these, just to reach some of the radio stations so we knew what was going on, especially in World War II. Oh, yeah. So what was your family like? How many siblings did you have? Or? I had um, four brothers, mm -hmm. and my dad was postmaster at St. Ignace, Michigan, and my mother taught school there for a couple of years till she started having children, and then she was home most of the time. But we lived in a small house, or no, it was a large house, but it was a small town. Yeah. Probably the town, the population was around 2,500. Oh, yeah. So what did you do before you were drafted? Like, where were you? Were you in high school, college? I, I, was, going to, I was going to college, and I, um, I graduated from the University of Michigan, and then I went to Michigan State, and I was down there for two terms, and I got my draft notice. Oh, you um, got, so was it like a letter in yeah, the mail? Yeah, it's a letter from, mm -hmm. <laughs> letter from the President of the United States. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was the first thing you did when you found out you got drafted? The first thing I did, well, first thing I did was I knew we were going to be gone for a while. I went. Yeah. I went with the four, three of my buddies. We went down to, um, to uh, in Florida to the Florida Keys. Oh wow! <laughs> we just party. We kind of <laughs> had a good time and came back home about mm -hmm. two two weeks before I was going to get indoctrinated into the U.S. Army. Oh! I had to catch a bu a, a, a Greyhound bus at St. Ignace. Take me all the way to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Is that where you started? Was it Milwaukee? Mm, no, it wasn't actually where we started, but I started at Fort Landerwood, Missouri. Oh. And so then they had another bus meet us about three quarters of the way down the state and um, took us all the way over to Fort Landerwood, Missouri, which is quite a few miles west. And that was quite an indoctrination yeah. when we got out of this bus to wearing civilian clothes and doing what we wanted to do and all of a sudden they are really oh, yeah. telling orders at us, right, at us right and left what you're going to do, where you're going to be. and So you have to go to some like, training? Was that the first thing you did? He, no, the first thing we did is that first morning we had, we had to go through a lineup and get all our uniforms issued to us mm -hmm. and then I think it was in the afternoon or late the next day, we had to get all these shots and vaccinations for, oh, all, really? yeah, for all kinds of different kinds of diseases. And oh. they, they just ran you through like cattle. They didn't <laughs> care. They just, they just shot you, shoved you on through to the next one. Wow. And so we spent two or three days doing doing things, helping clean up around all the barracks and stuff. Uh -huh. Just, just um, work that wasn't real hard, but some of us had to work in the kitchen 
Yeah. And it was called KP in the Army. It was called Kitchen Police. And we worked, we worked there until we finally, after about being there for a, a week, we got assigned to a training group. And the training group lasts for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And so you, you had to be, do all these other things until you got in cycle with the big freshman in the eighth, going mm -hmm. for eight weeks. Yeah. And that, that's when we started. Yeah. All right, yeah. So what were like where you lived, the barracks, or oh. what was your food like? <laughs> <laughs> were they pretty bad? Well, no, it wasn't bad, but yeah, the, the barracks were, I mean, they were, they were still World War II binges back then in oh. the 1950s, and they, they allowed smoking in the barracks. Oh. There was all these props holding the building up all the way down the aisle. Every one of them had a big tin can on them. They called it the cigarette butt can. And all <laughs> these people would, there was smoking that night, they had to go put their cigarette out in that thing. And lots of nights in our barracks in Fort Landwood, Missouri, that was in January, it got awfully, awfully cold and some nights, these cans that you put, just, that put the cigarette butts in froze. I never smoked. Yeah. But anyway, they froze. It was froze. In the morning, it was iced up, ice mm -hmm. on the top of them, and that's how cold the barracks was. Oh, wow. And then we all had to jump out, line up, <laughs> and go get showers. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was tough on me yeah. getting started. Uh-huh. So, like... What did you do when you served? What were some of the tasks you did? Or... Well, the first thing that happened was that at the end of, I think it was in my third week of basic training, mm -hmm. that was out in the cold and the rain and the Missouri it didn't get pretty cold yeah. in, the, in uh, January. Mm -hmm. And I caught pneumonia and I had to go into the 